He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole wide world in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to New Hope in the Lord. I'm Reverend Joseph, your host, and I thank you for uh, watching our broadcast today. Hatred. It's prevalent in the world. And the author of hatred is Satan. When he came into the garden and he tricked Adam and Eve to uh, stop and stop to do what God said to do. And what God said to do is just to worship him, keep his eyes on him. But they listened to uh, what the devil had said through the snake, and that was to eat and touch the tree in the middle of the garden, which they shouldn't have even touched, because if they touched it, they would have died spiritually. But not only did Eve touch it, but she ate it. And um, all sin started then. And hatred is, um, hatred is just rampant of all races, all religions, all creeds. And so all the author of it is, is, is the devil. But when Jesus Christ comes into your life, uh, there's a transformation in your heart and your mind where God works to will and to do his good pleasures in your life. People who have hated uh, now start to have the spirit of God come in them and change their life. Everybody has uh, different attributes that are negative uh, before they come to Christ. Some might have hatred, some might not. Some might have fear, some might not. Some might have this and some might not have that, whatever it might be. But God is working in your heart and your life to change you when you come to Christ. But more important than the change here on earth is that your sins will be forgiven. Like uh, Alejandra Hamilton my guest today's sins were forgiven once you came to Christ. The blackboard is clean. Uh, the slate is clean. No matter how bad or how not so bad, uh, it could be somebody who has had a horrible past and somebody who didn't do anything that would consider a horrible past, but they still hadn't had their sins forgiven through Jesus Christ. It's the most important decision you ever make, ladies and gentlemen, is to, you're going to reject Christ and the blood sacrifice on the cross, or you're going to receive Christ into your heart, like Alejandro did, and have a new life here on earth, but more important, that when you die, you won't be judged for your sins, you'll be going to heaven. Alejandro, thank you so much for taking time out of your um, busy schedule to share uh, the goodness of God. So... Why don't you just start off uh, with your upbringing? Uh, mm -hmm. Were you born into a religious family, a Christian family, or um, did you go to church? So I, I grew up Catholic, um, and we would only go to church, you know, um, the holidays, Christmas, or, you know. Um, so I knew about Jesus. I knew that he died on the cross. Um, but I, I also grew up learning about, you know, saints and Virgin Mary and all that. and So everything that comes along with that. Um, but I... I knew of Jesus. I, I did not know who he was. I didn't know him as a friend or as a father. I didn't know him as a companion. Um, I didn't know that he could be in my heart, that I could talk to him. I thought that you had to talk to him through uh, a priest, you know, or through somebody else. Um, so I, and, and growing up, you know, I had a pretty rough upbringing. Um, my father was an alcoholic, so he was very abusive and um, verbally abusive. And so I grew up without hope. Um, I grew up not knowing a father, you know, as a friend. And um, so I was very, you know, depressed and, and as a teenager, suicidal. And um, I self-harmed and I dealt with a lot of anxiety um, that comes along with that. So um, my upbringing wasn't very, you know, positive um, until I encountered Jesus. Um, was, um, was your mom involved in your life? Was your father is your father and mother are living together, and um, did yeah, you, yeah. And uh, was your father abusive to your mother too? 
Yeah, yeah, it, it was, um, he was physically abusive with my mother um, and just verbally with us, but, um, you know, it was still not good, but they were, they're, I grew up with both of them in the picture, um, so they were, they were, they were married. I asked you, um, uh, was it hard for you to go home? Uh, from yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was hard for me in school and at home, you know, because in school it, you just grow up like a, I grew up like as a shy person, so I didn't really open up to people and have a support. So it was hard both in school and at home. And, um, unfortunately, um, you, you were Catholic, and uh, uh, Catholics don't go to heaven. Uh, Catholic Christians go to heaven because uh, <laughs> there's a lot, there's a lot of Catholics that are Christians that have received Jesus in their life, and they will go to heaven. Uh, but re religion uh, in, in the Protestant uh, ism, um, it's no different. Uh, there's um, different denominations that are no different than uh, the um, Catholicism that, that you grew up. You, you, you don't get a message of being born again and having hope. Mm -hmm. And, and that's, where, um, that's where Satan uh, reigns and rules, uh, mostly in religion. Um, and uh, he has really duped so many people. But when when you come to know Jesus as you do, uh, you look back, and, and the only thing uh, that you could really say is they didn't know Christ. And so you, you can't give somebody something that you don't know. And and so uh, and uh, your your life was kind of in a torment because uh, when your home life is is bad, especially, you know, with somebody who's an alcoholic or a, a, a drug addict. Um, it, it, it's very, very difficult. So um, did you did you have any friends in school? Because you said you were shy and introverted. And if you did, uh, were they ones that you shouldn't have maybe hung out with? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I definitely surrounded myself with people that I shouldn't have and turned to, like, you know, drugs and alcohol to try to you know escape the torment because I was very very tormented in my mind like I, I heard the voices that would tell me you know you're not worthy um, you know harm yourself like you, you don't mean anything to anybody so yeah I, it was definitely hard and I did try to you know commit suicide a couple times and ended up crying out to God and he spared me you know thankfully um, did, did anybody um, come to you Alejandra and share the gospel uh, with you uh, about Jesus Christ? Did you have anybody that you knew or did you see it on TV or, or, uh, or, or kind of you just was kind of hearing it but not receiving it or you didn't hear it at all? I, I did hear it from a couple of people and like some friends, but mostly I would see it in people. Um, like, I remember I had a fifth grade teacher who, she was a Christian, and I would see, you know, in her life, the joy, the joy of Jesus. And uh, I remember seeing that, you know, in, in those hard times. But um, I didn't actually hear um, the gospel from a preacher until me and my now husband uh, ended up going to to church. And it, it, it's, a, uh, it's really sad because um, the, the devil... Um, he, he binds up people um, that uh, they, they're true to their religion and uh, they uh, were born this and they'll die this. And, and you also go to hell in that religion without getting your life straight with God. And, and, and so uh, the people that you were hanging out with that weren't good people, what uh, uh, children, I should say, what, what what age were you when you started to do the drugs and the alcohol and and the suicidal thoughts? When did how old were you then? I think I was probably like fourteen and fifteen. You know, it was around that uh, middle school going going into high school time. And um, now you had suicidal thoughts, and and, and you tried to to do it um, a after uh, you were unsuccessful. Uh, and doing it, th did you ever, did anything come to your mind about God and maybe God had something to do with this? Or did you just think it was like a, maybe a coincidence, like so many people do think that way? 
No, it was definitely uh, a, like a supernatural experience because, you know, I took pills hoping that, you know, I just wouldn't wake up the next morning. And then I remember, you know, like crying out to God and then him reminding me of like my family and like my sister and like how I didn't want her to find me the next morning. So that was, you know, that was all God. And, and and it's it's a it's a good thing. Uh, I, I remember um, we've had a couple of uh, people on the show where um, that one fella actually um, he he threw every he was standing on a bridge and he was ready to jump over and on the concrete and he took his wallet he threw it away and he took his shirt off and he just had his pants on and and, and it came to his mind. Um, what would happen if I don't kill myself and I would be alive and be a quadriplegian? Uh, I'd be um, a basket case. And that's why he yeah. didn't do it. And and so with you, uh, God used your sister. And, and, and thank God that you did have that to use because, you know, the devil might have won out on you. But he, but he, but he, he's, he's a liar and uh, he's going to spend eternity. Uh, in the the lake of fire one day. So, um, so now you're 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 you, after you're out of school, you're still partying uh, and still getting into situations that you shouldn't have. Yeah, yeah. I mean, just how every you know kid does. It's just so normal nowadays for you know kids to be involved with alcohol and and drugs and all that. And I actually didn't stop until I was delivered. You know, until I got saved, I met my husband and. We both got saved and got our lives right, um, and that's how we both stopped, you know, doing that. And um, was it was it God who, uh, in your mind, in your heart, uh, was it something when you met your husband Eli? Was it something that was uh, that you knew was ordained of God, or uh, just you were both kind of on the uh, wrong road when you were together? And then both of you come to Christ uh, together. Yeah, well, my, my husband was ba like um, backslidden, you know, like he knew the Lord growing up. Um, and then me and my sisters got saved um, after me and my husband were already dating a couple of months, I think around like eight months. And um, we, were, we were in church and my husband was already talking about, you know, getting engaged and stuff. And I was like, no, you're crazy. Like, we're too young. <laughs> like, you don't, don't be talking about that. Um, but I remember one worship service. Uh, I was worshiping and praying and asking the Lord, you know, if this is your will, because we were already saved. Like I was already, you know, walking with the Lord and I just wanted to, for him to be in everything in my life. So I wanted confirmation from him about, you know, taking this step forward with my, with my now husband. And I remember uh, during that worship service, looking up at Eli and I heard that, that small still voice in my head, you know, telling me to do it, to get married. So then that day I told my husband, I was like, all right, you know, we can do it because I, it's been confirmed by the Lord. Here's the difference uh, between voices that you hear in your head. Uh, uh, as you heard uh, voices from uh, Satan and the demons, uh, you're no good. You'll never amount to anything. You're trash. Look at your life. It's useless. It's hopeless. Uh, kill yourself uh, too. Um, yeah, go do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And your life will be blessed. And um, so, you know, the scripture says, my sheep uh, hear my voice and they they, they follow not a, a stranger. So so you know the difference now between the, the gentle, loving, kind voice of the Lord and, and, and the one that comes to steal, kill and destroy. Um, what, what, when you came to Christ, um, did you uh, go share that with your family? Um your, your your dad, your mom, uh, friends, or did you kind of just wait uh, and be like the school teacher that you saw Christ within her? You saw the love of Jesus. You saw a change in her heart. So me and my sisters all started going to that same church. I have three older sisters. So when we started going, um, it was just us and then my husband. And me and all my sisters at the end of uh, this one service, I think it was a second or third, you know, like we were ready to receive Christ. It, was, it didn't take much, but um, uh, we, at the end of the service, the pastor asked, you know, if anyone wanted to raise their hands to receive Christ. 
and we didn't really fully know what that meant. You know, we were very brand new to to um, receiving Christ and, and allowing Him to come into your heart and change you and make, make you into a new creation. Um, but we all raised our hands together, and the pastor was kind of taken back. And then after the service, he he was like, "Do you guys can you guys counsel with me so I can, you know, further explain what this means because this is a big decision that you are making in your life." And uh, we did. Me and one of my sisters went and counseled with him, and he explained it to us in his office. And Eli was there too, um, and we got to experience it and pray, and, and it was just such an amazing thing. And and yeah, we did share it with our parents, but they were still like very um, into their Catholic faith because they hadn't, you know, they hadn't experienced it for themselves because it's not something that you just learn and then you're like, okay, it's it's where you feel that drawing from him to for you to come to him because he is your father. I um, I, I know a, a, a family where, um, Catholic family where the daughter uh, came to Christ and, and they threw her out of the house. <laughs> I mean, yeah. <laughs> throughout, uh, she, she, um, uh, him and his wife were very religious, going to church always, but they were still partying and having a good time and dirty jokes and drinking and stuff. And here the daughter comes home and tells them about Jesus and being born again and having a supernatural encounter with the God that created you. And they threw her out, but thank God. A few years later, both of them came to Christ. And um, yeah. did, uh, did did your parents uh, come to Christ yet? Or um, are they still, um, you know, kind of um, involved in their the, the, the tradition of their faith? Um, no, both of them have, thankfully, within the last year, um, my mom and my dad. Because, you know, my oldest sister, she's... Uh, she started, you know, preaching to them about the Lord and sharing the gospel and all my other sisters. And they've just seen, they've seen, you know, miracles happen with my son while he was in my, in my womb and his healings. And they've seen the Lord move in all of us's lives, you know, so it's not something they can deny. Um, but yeah, they, they have come to Christ. Thank goodness. Why don't you talk about your son? Uh, Cause I know your husband, Eli and, uh, ladies and gentlemen, that you can see Eli Hamilton's testimony on my YouTube channel. Uh, you just put, go to YouTube and put his name in, forward slash New Hope in the Lord. Um, and I know he talked about with your, your son being born with Down syndrome. Um, wh why don't you share about the miracle you said about in your womb? Because that, that's uh, because basically, um, you know, um, the life is in the womb. It's a baby. Uh, and... Um, Again, these people that are committing uh, murder, that's what it is. Uh, they call it abortion. It's murder. Um, they, they don't know uh, what they're doing um, until they come to Christ, uh, most of them. Some of them do. There was a Dr. Nathanson uh, years ago. Uh, he committed, he, he I think, 10,000 abortions he d did in New York and um he came. He came to know it was murder, and he never came to Christ to know that either. Uh, he just came to Christ and made started making videos of showing how there's children in the womb. But the good thing is, is that you come to Christ and all your sins are forgiven, even that, and that the children go to heaven. But why don't you share about the miracle that um, happened uh, in your womb? Yeah. So when um when I we got pregnant and we found out uh then I, when you're 20 weeks they do a test called a quad screening where they test for Down syndrome and um, it gives you like a percentage. So we, uh, you know, we knew we were pregnant, we were excited and um, we received a call and they told us, you know, there's a 95% a chance that your son is going to have Down syndrome. And we were, you know, very broken and afraid and we didn't know, you know, what that meant for the baby or, you know, if he would survive. And then we went in for a, a ultrasound that they do where they check for further signs, you know, and they found all of that. So, we pretty much knew that the baby was going to have Down syndrome. But at the end of that appointment, the doctor comes in and, you know, he tells us all the, all the negatives about um, what comes with a child with a disability uh, with Down syndrome. And it was just a list. It was a long list. And um, at the end, he offered, he offered, uh, they called it, he referred to it as termination of the pregnancy. And me and my husband knew what that meant. And we were just like, no, we don't want to do that. You know, we're we're going to have faith and and hold on to that for this baby that he will be okay. 
And, um, and they offered it two more times on two more separate appointments until, you know, we switched doctors because we were just not going to deal with that, um, with them bringing it up every single time. Um, and in that uh, ultrasound, they also found fluid in his lungs, which they said could, you know, restrict his growth and um, essentially, like, kill the baby. And, um, you know, we went home and we talked to our families about it. And, and we just knew that we were going to hold on to our faith and hope um, for healing. And then we we prayed and then the Lord healed it. The next time we went in for an ultrasound, um, they didn't find that fluid. And they said it had gone away. Um, but they did find, after that one, they found that um, the baby had a hole in his heart. And that was further along, you know, a couple of weeks later. So then they sent us to a cardiologist. And then that initial appointment, I saw that the hole was, you know, it was there. I saw it in the ultrasound the lady showed me. And then we go in, um, we go home and then we pray and we, we hold on to the Lord. And then we go back to the cardiologist appointment and she's like, I don't know why you're here. You know, the baby's heart's fine. You don't need to see a cardiologist furthermore. And man, we were just so excited. We knew the Lord was moving. Um, and then lastly, there was another ultrasound that we had where um, I could see that they showed me like one of his lungs was developed and the other one wasn't. So the one was like kind of shriveled up and I saw it with my own eyes. And um, and they told us, well, you know, we're going to have to keep an eye on it. He might need steroids. He might need to do other stuff to help, you know, the baby. And then um, I was like, okay. You know, I, I already knew the Lord was going to heal it because, you know, we were just holding on to him. And he did. The next time we went in, the, the lungs were completely fine. And then I was further along um, in my pregnancy there. And then I think the baby was born like within the month after that. And he was born healthy. The birth was traumatic, but at the end of the day, everything worked out to where the baby was healthy and he didn't even need, you know, further intervention. But I remember during that trial, um, I was, you know, at the altar at one of the services and and I was so scared uh, for my baby. And I remember just, like just praying to the Lord and I heard him say, like, Asher is mine. He's not yours to take care of or to worry about. He is mine. And that just gave me all the hope that I needed. That I, I knew, you know, that was the Lord's, not not mine. It was just so beautiful, and and it took that weight off my shoulders. And that's what Psalm one thirty nine says. It says that um, all the members uh, were were written um, uh, when none of them were uh, already um, done. And that um, that there is a baby in the womb, and everything that God has created is in He's created everything in this world, everything. And the so God showed Himself that that Asher is His because there's three miracles that happened in the womb, uh, where um, where where they say uh, it's just a, a a blob, and and you you. Held on, you, you know, um, Alejandro. Satan doesn't give up. He had these doctors that say, you know, kill the baby, kill the baby, kill the baby, and it's no, 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 no different with um, in, in Jeremiah. Uh, sorry, Genesis chapter thirty-nine, verse ten, where uh, Joseph is in uh, Potiphar's house, and he's taking care of Potiphar's house. You know, he's a slave there, was sold to Potiphar, and Potiphar's wife wanted um, him to lay with her. And three times, she, she three, lay with me, lay with me, lay with me. And three times she said, no, no, no. And then she finally stole his coat and made it look like a coat of many colors that he did. But th thank God that you were you were strong in the Lord, you and your husband. And you said, no, uh, there's a baby um, that is going to be born. And uh, the baby is going to uh, be uh, God's child. And that's so beautiful. And as you said earlier, that you didn't know that uh, Jesus, uh, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, they're all all part of your life and in your life, and, and that uh, God's your Father. And um, how, how, how is your relationship with your dad now compared to what, what it was when you were um, didn't even want to go home? <laughs> yeah, well, it's, it's wonderful now. He... You know, Asher is his only grandson and his first son in our family because he had four daughters. So he's just 
absolutely obsessed with him. <laughs> so it's it's wonderful. I've seen him turn into just such a softy and, you know, a wonderful grandpa. And, and he stopped drinking, you know, like over a decade ago um, and recently, you know, stopped smoking because he was delivered and, and he gives the glory to God. So it's just so beautiful seeing, you know, the Lord move in our family and all the glory goes to him. Your father's a testimony, your sister, your testimony. Anybody who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Did, did you ever think um, growing up uh, uh, and your heart had to be hard and and, and, and you had to be an angry uh, young child growing up that in your wildest dreams, you probably never thought that you would have a heart like you have now. Um, full of love and <laughs> compassion. Uh, only God could do that, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, definitely. How old is Asha? Um, he'll be three in March, and he is just such a wonderful, loving child, and he just loves everybody he meets, like even strangers. And I've just seen the love of God through him. It's just so amazing. So, with with all that 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 the, the world says to do um, probably I would say probably most of it if not all of it that the world said is right to do is contrary to God's word and you and your husband know the difference now and and so um, the, the people in the church they must have been real supportive for you correct yeah yeah the church we were, we were in they were they were great and very supportive and we had you know, supportive family, and even now, the church that we're in now, they're very supportive. They're a family. And and, and uh, are are you um, going to kind of you you're probably going to be like a a stay home mom? Is that what you're going to be? Uh, yeah, yeah. I stay home with Asher, and we're expecting a little girl in May. So um, the family's just growing now. <laughs> Oh, great. So you're uh, a family, uh, you're going to have a girl in May. Well, praise God. Yeah. And 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 the thing is, is that um, Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11 is so true. Is um, It says, uh, uh, I know the plans I have for you, saith the Lord, to give you hope in the future, and a peace and not evil, a hope in the future. Well, thank you, Alejandra, so much for sharing your heart uh, and, and those tears that you have are tears of joy. <laughs> they are. They are. Now, probably if you weren't born again, uh, and you, and your husband wasn't born again, you, you would have probably killed that child. And uh, we're thankful that that you understand that you know that your heavenly Father is going to take care of you and your family. Thank you for watching our broadcast. Thank, uh, thank you, so you for coming on. And ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching our broadcast today. Uh, you heard another powerful testimony of the changing power of the Lord Jesus Christ. But it's up to you. If you want to live the life the way you're living, God's not going to stop you. But you're not going to make heaven your home. Your sins are not going to be free. Come to Christ like Alejandro did, and you receive a new life, and your sins will be forgiven. In Jesus' name, I pray. Thank you for watching our broadcast today. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole wide world in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the wind and the rain. In his hands, he's got the wind and the rain. In his hands, he's got the wind and the rain. In his hands, he's got the whole.